Okay, the year is 1540. A man named John Leland wrote a lot of stuff down. 16th century, this wasn't uncommon, but this one piece of information he wrote down still sticks with us today, 500 or so years on. This piece of information, oh, it's still in print form today and it's taken its absolute gospel. Now that's not unusual for the musings and the theories of an antiquarian to stick around even today, especially one that was trying to get the ear of the king at the time. And he really did want to get the ear of the king. But what if I said to you that what he wrote down was wrong? Not just a theory of mine, but by definition, what he wrote was absolutely wrong. So let's go back a step or two. Now, a little while ago, we made a video about the source of the River Thames. I think we even mentioned John Leland. Ever since 1542, John Leland uh, decreed that actually Thames Head was the source of the Thames where we were earlier. We searched about for the source of the Thames and we found the original monument. I think then we went a bit further south and we even found another one. And that was great. All the maps seem to agree, source of the River Thames. And this hadn't been disputed since John Leland declared that right there in that position was a source of the Thames. We've taken it for gospel ever since. But it was wrong. So in that video, we went all the way back to uh, Seven Springs. And lo and behold, up on the wall there and over there, there's a couple of plaques in Latin declaring that this is the true source of the Thames. I'll show you one of those plaques. I'll just jump across the Thames. Right, there it is. The true source of the Thames. Now, like John Leland, we thought, well, we're being quite smart. This is uh, the top of the River Churn, a tributary to the Thames, and it goes further back than the actual source of the River Thames, therefore by rights making this the source of the River Thames. So that was it. Case closed, time to pack up. This antiquarian called John Leland, he'd been a little bit lazy in some respects, and he hadn't really researched properly, but we had, and we'd found the source of the River Thames. At least that was until Headley came along. And he said... So by your definition then, this actually isn't the source of the Thames? Like our friend John Leland 500 years previous, well, it turned out that we too were wrong. My name is Paul. And I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I'm Rebecca. And this is the story of how we too were wrong on the original source of the Thames. Now there are a lot of different definitions, but they all pretty much mean the same thing. Measure the distance of the river from its estuary along the course of the river to its furthest tributary. And that indeed is the source of a river. What? Headley, why did we get it? Why did we get it wrong? If you look at an ordnance survey map, you'll see that the tributary that comes from Seven Springs, a, 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 aka the source of the churn, actually meets another river at the uh, medieval village of Cobbley. Oh and that river actually comes from down a valley and then emerges just by the road uh, that we're going to uh, at a place called National Star College. And you can see it, it's a proper spring. It's a pipe coming out the ground with water coming out. And because it's further upstream than Seven Springs, then if you're gonna use the definition to make Seven Springs the source yep. rather than the one at Thameshead, then unfortunately that needs to be extended to this place. Right, we better go and take a look at that then, aren't we? Yes. So let's have another look at that map. And well, on the face of it, I can't disagree with Headley. It looks a lot longer. So we drove up there and we had a look. Now it's on a main road, so we couldn't get much talking done there, but we did get quite a few shots, including Headley's drone shots. And if we zoomed in from quite a distance away, well, you can see that this section here looks like it comes out of an underground section, maybe a culvert or maybe just naturally underground. Now, potentially this goes back further under the golf course, but we can't really include that because to be a river, well, you need to flow on top of the ground. 
So is that it there or is there yet another twist in this story? about halfway through the video. Yeah, I was wondering that myself, but hmm. hey-ho, okay. I guess we head back to the car. Yep. Yeah. okay, can I borrow this a minute and I'll meet you back at the uh, car? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 okay, thank you. Right, okay, um, the problem is the video is kind of going quite well and I didn't have the heart to tell them that I've actually received a message saying that there is another tributary that's a bit longer than the other two and uh, yeah, so we should really check that out, I guess. What? Right, so Headley, this is part three you've roped us into. <laughs> now we ended up here, but we're now at the top of Cali Hill Plantation. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, so you think there is something on the map here that we should be looking at? There are some springs that are marked on the OS map here that run down into a valley, down that way, and then join up with the churn at Cobbley. And e X this marks is the spot. X marks the spot. If this is a, a stream down here, yep. this is slightly longer. So this is longer than the New Star College? The National Star College, yes. Oh, National Star College? Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's slightly longer right. so by if, a few hundred metres. Right, if we find water, we have found the source of the Thames by definition, and you're not going to surprise us with the fourth, right? I haven't got the time or the energy, so no. <laughs> but I have, I have just been checking the OS maps and I can't see anything that would be longer. Right, okay, let's find the third and final potential source of the Thames. Well, Headley gets a drone out. I'm going to have a look at the exact spot on the map. It says Spring, which is kind of just up this road here, 200 meters away. So uh, see you guys in a moment. Right, I went a bit too far up this road, back down by about 20 or 30 meters, I think, somewhere in that hedge. Have a look at that under my feet, quite a bit of water, not frozen, must be being pushed up from somewhere and therefore a spring. Now if this could continually flow in that direction, this is the source of the Thames. So I was Headley flies right above me now and I just said the source of the Thames could be there because it's very, very wet where there's a drain here carrying a flow of water. That's underground. So does that mean that there's a break here and it doesn't count? Probably so. Let's head on down the valley and have a look. Right, so we've just found a curious, what looks like some kind of cattle um, watering hole. And it's probably the culvert that comes out of it. It's probably the culvert that we saw up at the top by the first spring. But sadly, there's no flowing water. So we really can't say that as a source as such, because you'd expect to see some kind of flow down there. I would imagine at some points water does flow down there, maybe in a heavy storm or something. So we're going to head down a tiny bit further and see if we can pick up this flow. And uh, we've only got a certain amount of meters to go before this becomes shorter than the National Star College uh, tributary. So what we're looking at now is a site of two more springs on the map a bit further down the hill. And we can see a lot of water around here, a lot of standing water. So again, that does add up. The map is right, but there's no flowing water between that spring and this spring today at least. And yeah, it's a frosty day, but we've also had a lot of water today. So I wonder if that's just sporadic and uh, when there is a storm or something, the water does flow, but that's it. Mm. So I guess we can't really count that, can we? No, but then if you go by that, you can't really count Thames Head either. Good point. And uh, this is going to be very close. We've, we've got two, 300 metres we've walked down. Yeah. And that's about the difference between this yeah. and the one at the National so Star College. So what you're College. saying is if we, can't, if we don't count that, National Star College is right. If we do count that, this is the source of the Thames. It's going to be confirmed after we get home, isn't it? All right. Right, the water's gone. There's a man-made pond there, so they obviously expect water there. It's even got an outflow pipe coming out of it. So where's the water gone? Water should be here. There's a lot of water flowing up there, but it's gone. Um, I'm going to get down here and show you what we mean. Woo. There's an obvious flow here. The grass is flattened where there has been water. Where is the water? Ah. Right, well, we've lost the river completely. 
uh, I say river, we've lost the brook or whatever you want to call it completely. So if that is the source of the Thames, where does the water go? Probably goes underground, sad to say. So um, I'm afraid, Headley, yeah. I don't know if we can count this. And it's, it's a bit of a shame because up that side, you've got a hill fort. Yeah. And there, you've got some very defined yeah, earthworks. Yeah. And you'd think those between the two, you'd probably yeah. have a flowing source of water. But maybe over the years, agriculture has piped it underneath the valley somehow. Yeah. And this is now a gate rather I wonder than if you're right. I wonder if it is, there is, is yeah. culverted man-made culvert underneath. So basically, the OS map is right. There are springs up there, it is flowing, but it probably is culverted all the way down there, which means we're back to National Star College, right, Headley? Yep, we are. Seems to be the furthest from the, uh, from the estuary. Right, so if that is the case, well, we're still a point in making this video because it still does prove that actually it's not where we were at Seven Springs. It's actually near National Star College where it first appears unbroken and is a greater distance. Therefore, that is the source. Yeah. Okay. Case closed. And Case closed. Until next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching, people. I've been Paul. I'm Rebecca. And I've been Rebecca. Right, let me get some video going up the middle. Right. Cool. Wild Headley in his natural habitat. Mm.